Hi guys, it's Liam from IDS. Today we're going to be having a look at how to use the built-in accelerometer in the iPhone, iPod Touch and iPads uh, to move around objects on the display. So what we're going to do first, go ahead open up Xcode and then you want to create a new project. Alright, we're going to create a single view application and we're going to call it um, Accelerometer movement. And then we'll just do it for iPhone today, but the method will work on either devices or both. And we're going to go next. And then choose an appropriate appropriate location. And create a local Git repository and then press create. So we've got our project up. What we're going to do is we're going to go into the view controller, the header file, and we're going to start off by telling the um, project that we want to use the accelerometer. We do this by opening a arrow, a new UI accelerometer delegate, press enter, and then close it off. And then what we're going to do is we are going to define all of our um, variables. So open curly bracket. And then we're going to start by creating some floats, like so. These are what we use to um, work out the acceleration of the um, accelerometer. That's all we need in the interface section. Then we're going to go down and create a couple of properties. Uh, we'll be using Storyboard today, so make sure you have your project set for iOS 5. Um, and we're going to use an IB outlet, UI button, and then we'll call it um, button moving um, then we're going to create two methods I'm going to call one awake from awake accelerometer sorry and then we're going to create another called accelerometer UI accelerometer called accelerometer. This is a built in method, so it should pop up and then you just press enter like so. Then we're going to go into the main file and we need to synthesize our button that we created. So just tap down. Um, it's always a good idea to comment your code in case anyone uh, tries to take over or um, you leave your project alone for a while and then you sort of forget where you are. So we're going to synthesize the button and then we're going to put in our two methods. So we're going to start with awaking the accelerometer. So again I'm going to comment and then we're going to go void, awake and you see because we defined it in the header file it will pop up and open curly and close curly brackets. Right, to start the accelerometer uh, detect, detecting movement, what we're going to do, two square brackets, UI accelerometer, shared accelerometer, set update interval, and because I'm, I want it to be quite sensitive, I'm going to do 1 divided by 60. So, um, if you want a less sensitive movement, then maybe 1 divided by 45, or 1 divided by 30. And then we're going to say UI accelerometer, shared accelerometer, set delegate to self. Okay, that's that done for that bit. And then we're going to uh, control the accelerometer, or let it control the object, sorry. So we're going to call the built-in method, like 
so. And then what I'm going to do is define a macro for some values which I'm about to use. So I'm going to call mine moving riff, moving object. And I'll tell you why I do that in a minute. This is for the image that I'm going to use. So we're going to accelerate. We're now going to do the acceleration for the player. So we're going to use our value of x that we created back here, the floats, and then we're going to say equals acceleration times, and we'll use 45. So this is the speed, if you like. Let me do the same, but for value y. Oh, sorry, that that should be a dot x there. And then acceleration dot y times 45. If you only wanted your object to move either in the x-axis or the y-axis, or in fact the z-axis, then you only define one of them. So if you only want it to move horizontally, you wouldn't need this line right here. Semicolon. Then we're going to create new integers. An integer is a whole number, and we're going to use it in this case to store the player's new position. So just copy this. Button moving dot center dot x plus value x close bracket semicolon and then another integer int player new y equals int int sorry button moving dot center dot y plus value y Then we're going to um, validate the position of the uh, button. This will work just the same way for integers. Uh, sorry, for images as well. So we're going to say if int player new x is greater than 320, but this is obviously for iPhone. Now what I've done here for the moving object radius is I've set it here so if I change this it will change it to every instance of this macro. What we're doing is we're saying if the uh, accelerometer new position for X is greater than 320 which is the width of the iPhone screen then minus the radius of the button or the object and we say The, the new um, x value is 320, which is again the iPhone width, minus the moving object radius. This will stop it going too far off the right. And then we're going to do exactly the same again, but we're going to int player new x is less than 0 plus moving object radius. You don't have to call your macro moving object radius, it just this is what I'd rather do. And we're gonna go in player new x equals zero plus moving object radius, close bracket, semicolon. So that's the that will stop it going too far off the left hand side of the screen. And then we're gonna validate the y axis this time. We're going to say int player, but this time player new y is greater than 480, which is the height of the iPhone screen in pixels. Obviously, with the retina, it's um, 960, but you don't need to know about that. 